Reviewing Lab 3 React Rendering. To start, I have the objectives and instructions for this lab pulled up right here. I also have Visual Studio Code pulled up in another window. Before I move over to Visual Studio Code though, let's take a second and look at these requirements. So this is the first lab moving into React, which means we need to set up a new React project and then understand the concepts built into React to fulfill what, this, what these instructions are asking us to do. So notice part one says use npx create hyphen react hyphen app runner. npx is one of three different tools that comes with node. It comes with node and ODE, the tool to run JavaScript files, npm node package manager that we use to initialize new node projects and install or even uninstall packages and node package runner npx, the X stands for execute here or runner. So the npx tool, instead of downloading a package like npm does, it runs that package and produces some output. In most cases, like create hyphen react hyphen app, it creates something based on a template for us. So it goes and looks at the package and then replicates that template based on the rules that that package specifies. So if we need to use this tool, then we need to run npx space create hyphen react hyphen app space. And this says lab three. So let's move over to Visual Studio Code. And I've gone ahead and opened a new terminal. So terminal, new terminal after opening Visual Studio Code. And notice that my directory down here matches the current one up here. So instead of creating a new folder as we've done previously in node projects, in React projects, we're going to have the create hyphen react hyphen app tool do it for us. So npx space create hyphen react hyphen app space lab three. So this will not only go and look at the package and then run it according to its rules, but also go ahead and create this folder for us as well. So if I press enter, this will, after a few moments, Say, oh, I'm going to create a new React app in, tell us the exact location, blah, 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 slash lab three. And notice it says this might take a couple of minutes. Normally, depending on things like bandwidth and uh, computer speed and a number of other factors, this can take up to several minutes sometimes, depending on a lot of other things. Usually it will take around a couple of minutes at most. If this goes beyond several minutes, we can always go ahead and kill this over here. Notice the little trash can icon that would kill this terminal and stop that process. So keep in mind, it's going and it's looking online, getting that package from online, downloading it and following its rules. If at any point this stops or delays, we can always again, kill this, come back and rerun it to regenerate that lab three folder. Now it's about to finish this step right here. And then it's going to run some extra commands once it finishes. And we're going to see something that it does. There it goes, completed in 29 or five milliseconds. And it said it added 1,931 packages, so quite a number of packages. And then went through and added 32 more based on what those said. And then finally it is finished. So as in previously, when we created new node projects, we would create the directory and then in terminal, change directory into that folder that we just created. So it created the lab three folder for us. Notice over here, lab three, and it's in green showing us that it has been an addition. So if I click down here, we'll notice all this stuff is in green, all these new additions. Since the last time I synchronized my commits between the local and remote server on, Get on GitHub, notice of course the little U indicating this is an update. So it's a change that's happened. So I need to, change directory into lab three first. Notice lab three down here matches the lab three folder up here. And so I am looking at the current working directory in terminal matches the directory I want to look at within my files. So before we get too far, let's move back to the instructions. So it said right here, we want to add the runner. So we've done the runner right here. And then it said, okay, now the next step, add a new component that extends react.component and then it asks us to do some other things. So let's pause here in just a second. So whenever we're adding a new component, we want to do a series of steps. The first of which is to go ahead and create a components folder within the source directory. 
So when I say source directory, I mean SRC, which is an abbreviation for source that's dated back a number of decades. So it's a pretty common abbreviation for source, SRC. So with SRC selected, source selected, I want to create a new directory. So with it selected, a new folder right here. And call this components, lowercase components. And it's going to contain any of the components I'm going to create. Now the assignment asked us to create a new component called homepage, capital H, capital P. Components highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and create another new folder inside of components called capital H homepage, capital P, right here. Now coming back over here then, we see it says, okay, this should be a new component homepage that extends react.component. So if it's extending something that lets us know in JavaScript, it needs to be a class because classes are the only thing that extends other things in JavaScript. There's no, there's no other functionality that does that. So that lets us know a couple of different things. So over here, then, if we have a component over here, we need to create a new file and call this index. index.js. Now, right here, again, if it's extending react.component, that means that tells us several different things simultaneously. The first of which is if we're extending something, react.component in this case, we need to import it first. So that's the first step. Two, if it's extending, this lets us know it's a class. And three, we need to make sure if this is a class, we need to go ahead and make sure it matches the file name or folder. So, and then after that, make sure we are exporting it matching that same naming scheme. So first step, let's import React from React right here. Then I know this is a class, so home page, and it said extends. I want to extend React dot component, open and close in curly brackets, signaling this is a class. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it to export default home page. So again, as a review, export is the thing it's exporting from this file, or otherwise we wouldn't be able to use it. In the default combination, export default, says this is the only thing I'm exporting. I am exporting this single default thing, export default, and the thing we're exporting, homepage, the name of the class, and matches the class up here. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. So Control S in Windows, or of course Command S in Mac. So I've saved this. Let's go back and look at the instructions here. And it's okay, you should play the name, let's play the property first name as part of its render function using AFX. So we know as creating components based on react.component that it is a class component. So we know this because it's using the class keyword and it's a component. So if it's a class component, then that tells us something else we need. In React, all class components have to have a render method. So render right here, and now I have to find a win render method. Why do they need this? Well, remember when we communicate with objects, they communicate through methods. That's the way they communicate. So the only way to get data out of this, out of an object based on this class is through a method. And React is going to be looking for its render method. So if this is a class extending react.component, it needs that render method to signal that that's the thing we're using and that's how it gets information out of this. So it needs to return something. So I'm going to go ahead and use return and then I'm going to use open and close parentheses after return. All this is going to do is allow me to group different things I want to return out of this method called render. Let's go back and look at the instructions here and it said, okay. Homepage should display the property first name as part of its render function. So the property first name lets us know something else right here. Remember that React is converting elements and attributes into objects and properties. So if we want a property called first name, then we want, and again, this has to be some type of JSX, some type of thing that looks like HTML, but is technically JavaScript XML, JSX. If it's a property, it's going to be this dot props dot first name, right? Because when we convert the element and attribute to its object and properties, it will be the home page object or an object based on the home page class, technically. And all of its attributes will be 
set to the project set to the object this dot props we want first name so i'm going to go ahead and save this file and we've worked this out so far coming back over here then we say app the app.js file could not contain the default text or styles import home page as as an attribute first name with your first name so we're passing data from this file into another file using react we do that and we communicate through using again knowing it's converting between elements and attributes to objects and properties so let's move over to here and it said app.js should not contain any of its defaults which is basically all of this so i'm going to erase all of this except for the last line keeping in mind it has to export something that's matching its name notice the capital letter a exporting capital letter a when i had over here home page maxed matched what i was exporting from its index js so i'm going to go ahead and make this a class component so i'm going to import react from react so class component using a class keyword app extends react dot component there you go open and close parentheses or open and close uh early brackets that is it needs a render method again methods are how we get information out of an object open and close in curly brackets a little bit of typo there and so now what i want is i want to render an element called home page capital h capital p and tell react to create an object based on the class i created and pass to properties of that object attributes i'm going to give it so i'm going to write the element form of an object and it's going to convert when i run this from the element and attribute to the object and property form so i want to return and this is a method it's returning and i'm not going to use the open and close parentheses at this point i'm just going to say home page right here uh, page and I want to pass it something as an attribute it will have as a property. So first name as an attribute and give it a value Dan, that's my name. And of course, close this tag. So notice when I added it right here, it said, oh, do you mean import homepage from relative path dot slash component slash homepage? It's exactly what I wanted. And React was smart enough to realize that for me. It said, oh, um, in your other file, you are exporting this class. So I assume if you're exporting a class called a homepage and you're using the element form of homepage that you mean the same thing. And I did. And that allows us to shortcut that a little bit. So import homepage from flat, flat, you know, dot slash components slash homepage. Notice first name Dan right here. And so this element form homepage is an element. First name as an attribute would become over here home page as a class based on the object and of course first name as a property of this dot props any attributes i gave to this element right here would become properties of the object this dot props and remember props p or p p r o p s is just an abbreviation for properties like src is an abbreviation for source so this dot props is all of its properties that were all of its attributes in another file so if i go ahead and save this and verify back here that i have an app just file not contain the default text or styles so i deleted all the code that was there it imported the home page and passes as an attribute first name with your first name my first name is dan and we see here it would pass this into this and we would have it working so let's go ahead then and test this code. So we can test things. We can run a development server in React by using npm run start. And this will go through the three different steps of processing. It will parse the JSX, and turn it into JavaScript. It will then check the JavaScript to make sure it's stuff that can be used in a browser and it will package it all for a web browser. And then the additional step within running the start command, the start script, that then it will prepare it all for use in a browser. And we see Dan up here, D-A-N, 
And so everything is working correctly. I see no errors and I see no errors. So everything worked correctly and it is ready to submit. As one final thing, sometimes right here, notice this is an on running process, but we don't see the little command prompt. We don't see the ability to type commands. So if we ever were like, oh, how do I stop this? Clicking inside the terminal area and pressing control C twice will break it. Sometimes it takes it a couple of seconds to get, break out of it. So sometimes we need to give it just a second. Or if it doesn't work, as in this case, it didn't, we can double click right here, double click again, making sure we have selection and pressing control C again. And again, sometimes it's not always going to do it right away. So if we ever get stuck and we're like, oh, it's not doing anything and we're giving it some time and it's still not doing anything and it's still not doing anything and we're still stuck here, we can always kill the terminal. As I mentioned before, especially with running long-term processes, like we're running npx space react or create hyphen react hyphen app space the name of the folder. Sometimes those things take several minutes. This might be another case where low, it's just gotten stuck. And even if I press control C, notice it's not breaking out of it. Always kill the terminal over here, kill terminal and the terminal disappeared. And because I don't have a terminal running, I go to terminal, new terminal and start a new one. Now, if we do that, keep in mind down here, we're in a different folder to start because it matches over here. And if we wanted to get back, we could change directory back into the lab three folder and work from there. So I've got all of these files ready over here. I'm going to close all of this up. And I want to go ahead and put this on GitHub. So clicking over here, source control, I need to give it a message to basically describe what I just did. And I created, oops, lab three files. And I click the little check mark to commit. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to stage all of your commits? So I've got all of these changes. Do I want to send them all, put them all as this commit? Yes, I would like to do that. And then finally, we need to push the commit from the local collection to the server. We see down here, little synchronize matches zero down, one up. Or of course, if we want to push our commit from locally to remotely, we can click the three dots and go to push and give it just a second. Notice the little clock icon and the bar up here. And within usually a few seconds, we have pushed everything. If I go back to Explorer up here, we notice nothing else is green anymore. So all of the changes have been synchronized between my local system and the remote server. And we can also tell down here that we don't see any uh, changes other than a little circle right here. So this has been a review of doing lab three, creating a React project using the NPX runner, talking through how React does things, looking at creating a new component by first creating a new components folder then a folder named after the component I wanted to create, and then creating an index.js file inside of there. Then we saw creating that component as a class component, so extending react.component, and we went through the steps of extending it, then importing it in an app.js, working out and remembering that we are converting between elements and attributes to objects and properties. And then finally, we tested a code to make sure everything worked correctly, Everything did. We checked it against the requirements of the assignment. I set up everything to make sure it was on GitHub. And then finally, I was done. This has been a review of everything to do with Lab 3.